Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk about this news that we got uh, on Monday from Adam Adamu, who is the co-founder and CEO of Overactive Media, uh, who are the organization that oversee the Toronto Defiant, Mad Lions, and Toronto Ultra. Uh, Toronto Ultra, of course, being the Call of Duty uh, League team. Mad Lions, I believe, being... Uh, just their other kind of general brand. And he basically tweeted out saying, hey, that they, there's an agreement made between Overactive, the Toronto Defiant, and the Overwatch League. And essentially, the announcement was that the team's outstanding entry fees uh, for the Overwatch League were to be waived entirely, and that they would kind of be able to work together um, as part of a larger agreement. And we got more information uh, in an article from Hunter Cook and Kevin Hitt for uh, Sports Business Journal. I'll have a link to the full article in the description if you want to check it out. I recommend following along there. But in the article, titled Activision Blizzard's Overwatch League teams get massive financial reprieve, we'll see remaining fr franchise fee rescinded. They say that Overactive Media, the parent company of the Toronto Defiant, announced that outstanding entry fees for the Overwatch League are to be waived entirely. And provisions for the parties to further change the OWL business plan are now in place as part of a larger agreement. And Sports Business Journal can confirm that the entire Overwatch League has had their remaining entry fees waived as well. There's some other stuff in here, uh, but I want to jump to some of the other kind of juicier bits. Some of the some of the stuff that kind of, uh, you know, talks about some of the history of the Overwatch League. The 12 inaugural teams in the Overwatch League paid approximately $20 million each to join the league. Expansion teams that joined the league in 2018, so joined for the 2019 season, paid a premium at a total cost of around $30 to $35 million. Since then, team entry fees were reduced because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So after factoring in fees already paid on schedule, OWL teams still owed anywhere between $6 and $7.5 million. And it is that money owed that has been rescinded, it is unclear if any money paid before will come back to the teams. I imagine probably not. Um, but that is that is part of this. Uh, they also go on to talk about how this may not be the end of Franchise League slot fees being rescinded for Activision Blizzard Esports, um, and that there's uh, similar conversations that are they are open to having with the Call of Duty League. The CDL kind of has its own... Uh, success that is pretty different from the Overwatch League. I would argue it's more successful than the Overwatch League in its in its own capacity. It's kind of figured out really well how to do it. Um, some of it comes from the fact that the League is not as global as the Overwatch League is, which so operates a little bit better. Things work a little bit easier. Um, but it's interesting that they, they do talk about that they do hope to kind of have a similar conversation and deal in place with the CDL. Because if you think about it, I don't know what exactly the franchising fees were for the CDL, but let's say you jumped in in the inaugural season of the Overwatch League and then jumped in in the inaugural season of the CDL. CDL started later, so if the franchising fees were the same, you could have been dropping 50 plus million dollars to join into both of these leagues and paying franchising fees every year uh, to remain a part of them. There's a lot there um, that just feels very unnecessary, and I think that's one of those things that just feels kind of like an issue. So I'm not that surprised uh, that they're, the teams are looking to uh, change this. There is a bit in here about how uh, the Overactive Media co-founder and CEO, Chris Overholt, left the company um, earlier this year around the same time that the Overwatch League teams had hired the Sheridan's law firm to collectively bargain against the league. If you remember that from back in January. So this has been something that clearly the league is trying to move on a bit and, and kind of evolve. Um, and the article closes with a quote from them where they say, quote, the esports industry continues to evolve, which is why we're continually exploring changes in our competitive structure together with teams. We look forward to sharing more details with our passionate fans as we head towards grand finals. So this is an interesting article, and it's important for, for a number of reasons. But the thing I wanted to talk about is what does this mean for the future of the Overwatch League and the, I guess, current Overwatch League as it is now? In terms of the current season, I don't think it really has any major impact. I think the season as it is 
should end up being exactly what it is expected to be. Summer stage is going to come around. We're going to get the tournaments there. We're going to get the qualifiers there. And then we're going to have the playoffs. We don't know yet how many teams are in the playoffs, but, you know, that's kind of the general idea and consensus behind that. I don't think that's going to change much, if at all. I think where this is going to have the implications is going forward. And I think really what this means is it frees up teams who want to dip out of the league. They can dip out now with relative ease. Um, but it also means that teams that want to commit can commit without having to basically bankrupt themselves, which is potentially the type of situation you were dealing with before. So I, I think the path forward for the Overwatch League is probably going to be something similar to what we're seeing in the Eastern region this year and in, in stuff like Valorant, where there are going to be a set number of slots uh, per region, most likely, where you get to participate in tournaments guaranteed if you're an Overwatch League team. So whichever teams want to continue to commit to the league, whichever teams want to continue fielding rosters and whatnot can still do that. But you think about teams like Chengdu, the LA Gladiators, the LA Valiant, who, you know, Chengdu's gone. The LA Gladiators parent organization has basically said we're done after this year in everything. LA Valiant have seemingly wanted to get out of the league for four years now. And potentially other teams as well. You know, it depends on, on where teams go from here. But, you know, teams now may have a little more flexibility to eventually drop out of the league um, and choose to pursue different things. Shanghai Dragons probably would be another one of those teams, you'd imagine. But for teams that do stick with the league, for teams that do choose to keep fielding rosters, choose to keep playing, I think they would likely be those kind of auto bids into the tournaments while contenders teams would have that kind of open circuit that they could play through to try to get to um, some of these tournaments. Which I think is cool. I think that's a good kind of format. I think it's a good way to make it work. My concern would be like too few matches, like too much of a reduction in play and too much of a reduction in the amount of games that teams play. I think that you need to, to provide like events with just your upper level teams, just your Overwatch League teams, your franchise teams, where they can kind of have chances to play and lock up spots and those same tournaments like you have right now with the Western region where they are able to, you know, like the Atlanta rain did Houston outlaws did by getting top two in the Western region. They guaranteed themselves a spot in the mid season madness. They don't have to worry about playing through the knockouts right? where maybe that's the feature of the league where it's like, yeah, if you finish top of your region or top two of your region, whatever it is, you don't have to play in the knockouts. You automatically qualify for the mid season tournament. And then we open up those the, the knockout tournament to both Overwatch League and Contenders teams who play through this kind of format where the Overwatch League teams will automatically get into the knockouts no matter what. And the Contenders teams have to play through an open circuit. And then the best teams from the open circuit then have to play through the knockouts. And only if they can do well in the knockouts, they move on to the, the tournament itself. So that's kind of how I think the league is going. That's the direction I think they're going. I think they're trying to basically provide to the franchisees. They're trying to say, you have the first basically dibs. You have the financial capital. And because you're guaranteed to have a spot in the tournaments, in the league, basically, you're in a position where you can basically still get the best players. Because the best players are going to want to play for a roster where they know they're not going to potentially miss out on these chances to play and perform. They want to make more money. Um, and more money is going to come by way of being on these Overwatch League rosters. But now I think we are seeing the expansion to be a more open circuit and a more open system. Obviously, it's all speculation. There's no confirmation in any of this that, yes, we're getting a more open circuit. We're getting contenders teams in the Overwatch League for future seasons. We don't know yet, technically, right? Um, we, we have absolutely no idea, but what we can see based on the trends going on in the Eastern region right now and the trends going on in the wider esports environment, it seems pretty likely to me, uh, that we're going to be seeing this more open system with more kind of privilege shown to these Overwatch League teams, but it's not going to just be them. And it's going to allow for, I think, better competition. It's going to allow for kind of better pathways into the Overwatch League. 
And I think in general, it'll probably be a better overall kind of product when all is said and done, because I think gatekeeping esports is problematic. Um, you know, there's all this conversation about how to monetize esports. Uh, I'm hoping that this is one of those things that can help. Um, I don't know if, you know, exactly how opening it up like this would be like an immediate assistance or an immediate help in trying to boost that. But I think there's evidence that it, it, it could. I think there's evidence that if you open it up to more teams and more people, that you create the opportunity for more um, investment into the ecosystem. Because if people who are just playing at home can do well, it gives you more incentive to grind and to play. And I think it gives you more eyes and it gives you more ability to then say, this is something we should continue to invest in uh, and we'll see what happens. And there's obviously the looming question and looming picture of what happens with this Microsoft acquisition. It seems very, very likely it's going to happen. Uh, it gets closer and closer and closer based on kind of the approvals that we're seeing, you know, around the world. I think it's really just uh, the UK uh, that is currently like the major hiccup for it. But it seems like that's going to go through. So maybe part of this is to try to open up the ecosystem to kind of clear some of the finances and try to put the league in a position where they have a lot more flexibility when Microsoft takes over. Maybe Microsoft takes a, wants to take a different approach with the league. You know, maybe they want to axe the league entirely. Maybe they want to do a more open approach and think that they can use it more as like a kind of an advertising thing. There's a lot of different questions, a lot of different kind of possible reasons for it. So it's something I'm going to be following. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I'm very intrigued um, by this news article. Very intrigued by this news and this report. And I just want to talk about it a bit to kind of get everyone's opinions on it and hear what you all have to say. That's all for me for this one. Shorter video today. Just kind of wanted to talk about this. Like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I think it's really important. I think it's really interesting. And I think it's a fascinating development. And I'm really curious to kind of see where the league will go going forward. But that is all for me for today. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it in the future, consider liking and subscribing. That's all for today. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye!